Hello, welcome to another video. And for this final video of 2023, we're going out with a new camera. Well, not a new, new camera, new to me camera. You've seen the channel, you know how this works. Inspired by Emily from Microphone Nerds and her tiny camera series, I decided I'd like to add something to my own tiny camera collection. Now my tiny camera collection, granted, only currently consists of the Lumix LX1 and the Lumix LX3. But any excuse to buy a new camera, right? Now both the LX1 and LX3 are compact fixed lens type cameras and I wanted something with interchangeable lenses and a bigger sensor just to give me a little bit more usability in tricky lighting conditions. Now after watching both Emily and Matthias Berling talk about the Pentax Q camera system, I wanted it. It's so cool. It's it's like a tiny thing and it's, it's but it's a little bit obscure and, and there's quite a limited range of lenses. So I ultimately wanted to go for something that's a little bit more easily accessible and more familiar to, you know, all you lot. Enter the Sony Nex5. NX, NX5? Nex5? Is that, I don't know which way, I don't care. It's a fun camera. Now to give you a comparison of size and just how small this thing is, this is the Sony NX5 next to the LX3. And as you can see, you know, it's pretty much the same thing. The only real difference is that the Sony has that little bit extra grip on the front there, but dimension wise, they're pretty much the same thing. And for further comparison, here it is next to my iPhone 12 mini. Yeah, it's tiny. All right, so let's quickly go through some specs and have a look around this camera. Now, just to further elaborate on how small this camera is, it's a Sony E-mount camera. And as you can see here, the mount is clearly bigger than the body, so much so that they had to accommodate for a tripod plate with this little hump on the bottom here. Otherwise, you know, the tripod plate would hit the mount. It is very, very small. The next 5 was launched in 2010, and in terms of resolution, I think this sits in that sweet spot for APS-C. It's 14.2 megapixels. Now, this is the same size sensor and resolution as the A350 from Sony that I talked about recently. The big difference being that the A350 is a DSLR style body with a CCD sensor, whereas this is a mirrorless body with a CMOS sensor. So what I'm going to do a little bit later on is we'll do some like ISO testing just so that you can see the difference between the two. Now it will shoot RAW and JPEG and has an ISO range of 200 to 12,800. And from what I've seen from my use, both at night and in the daytime, it's got up to about 1600 ISO, possibly further. And if you throw in a little bit of noise reduction in there, you probably even get a little bit more out of it, which isn't really surprising for an APS-C sensor with relatively low megapixels. So this is the video from the NEX5. This thing doesn't have a microphone jack though, so this is the audio that you're getting unless you're gonna record external audio. I have no idea what this looks like, but uh, it might be all right in a pinch for a little bit of B-roll or something like that. Now in terms of handling, it's all right. It's what you'd expect from such a tiny camera. Now I'm a reasonably big guy. So uh, yeah, there are a few things that are not ideal for me. This is a real pain. This is the the lug for the uh, for the strap there, and uh, it sits right in the palm of your hand. It's like what? I mean, I know obviously on a camera this small, we're quite limited where we can put things. But I mean, who the hell thought that was a good idea? The second thing really is the fact that it is such a light camera. This is the TT Artisan 50 mm f 1.2. Granted, this is quite a heavy lens because it's all metal, but. When you put a lens like this on this camera, it immediately feels very front heavy. And it's, you know, I mean, look at the size of that bloody lens. It's like, it's way heavier than the camera itself. So yeah, it's just one of those trade-offs that you have to accept when you're using such a tiny, tiny camera. Now, ideally you would want something you know, like a little tiny kit lens or like a little pancake prime or something like that. But uh, yeah, this is just what I've got at the minute. Now it has this tilty up to about 90 degrees screen and tilt down 
to about 45 degrees screen. It's similar mechanism to what you get on the A6000 type cameras, not exactly the same, but similar. And it's great for shooting from the hip kind of thing for street and all that kind of stuff. Now the next five has no hot shoe or viewfinder. Now it does have this tiny accessory port up on the top, however, which you can use with the provided flash. If you bought this new, you've got this nifty little flash and I bought mine used from MPB, not sponsored. And it actually came with the little flash unit and that literally just plugs into the top there and it is an adjustable flash. So it can be used for bounce and stuff like that. Now, something to bear in mind that if you do want a camera with an EVF, um, take note of the price of the external EVF for these things. I looked at it. I paid 68 pounds from this from MPB used and um, the EVF for this was getting towards 200 pounds. So to me, it makes more sense to just look for a model that actually has an EVF if that's really what you want. As you can hopefully see from those sample images, up to 1600 ISO, it looks perfectly fine with a little bit of noise reduction, the images look fine. And then at 200 ISO, which is what I was using for most of the daytime shots, it's clean as you'd expect, the images look great. Now, the next five uses the same awful NPFW50 batteries that Sony insisted on using right up to something like the A7 III. They're terrible, so if you are going to get one of these older Sony cameras, like even the A6000 models, make sure you get a few spare batteries because you are going to need them, I guarantee it, especially if you're going to start shooting video. All right, so let's have a look at some ISO samples, and I'm going to do some comparisons between this one and the A350, just so you can see what the difference is between the CCD sensor and the CMOS sensor. And like I said before, they're both APS-C and they're both um, 14 megapixels, give or take. All right, so at 200 ISO, as you can see, nothing to report here. Everything looks nice and sharp and nice and clean. Not really much going on. Same story pretty much for ISO 400, a little bit of an increase in noise, but nothing, you know, nothing really detrimental to the image. At 800 ISO, you're starting to see a little bit more increased noise, but overall, it still looks pretty clean, even zoomed in at 100%. Now, it's at 1600 ISO when we start to see the first signs of, like, you know, prominent speckles and whatnot, these little white spots all over the image here. But again, it's nothing I would really worry about so much. When you compare it to 800 ISO side by side, there is a clear difference there between the two. But with a little bit of noise reduction, I dare say that 1600 will look as good, if not better than 800. So not something I'd be worrying about. Moving on to 3200 ISO, this is where we start to see the first signs of the image kind of flattening out and that speckling has increased somewhat. But surprisingly for an APS-C sensor, it's actually not that bad still. I would quite happily use this with a little bit of noise reduction. Now at 6400, this is where you start to see the first signs of the image degrading. If you can just compare the two between 3200 and 64, you can see that texture appearing and the image is starting to get that sort of flattening look. And 12,800, this is where things start to get really rough. If we just compare that to 6,400, that's quite a significant difference between the two. But with a little bit of noise reduction, if we compare the two, punch it in to 100%, as you can see, there is not a real lot in it. It looks pretty much the same, essentially. So you're getting about a stop by using noise reduction at about 30% in Lightroom. Now, if we quickly compare the next five to the A350, you're not really seeing a lot of difference from base ISO right up to 1600 ISO. When you get to 1600 ISO, however, I think the next five just about edges it. It does have more of those white speckles present in the image, but I think overall, I think the image of the next five just looks better. Another advantage of the next five over the A350 is that whereas the A350 stops at 3200 ISO, the next five has that extra two stops up to 12,800. And that is definitely usable up to at least 6,400. So you've got a little bit more of an edge there. Now the next five is pretty much what you would expect from a camera this old at this point, but it is very capable and has some great features. It has focus peaking, it has a seven frames per second burst mode. The image quality is really, really nice. And not to mention you've got access to Sony's E-mount and all of the lenses that come with that. So yeah, I think we can agree that this very tiny camera is pretty good.
Right, and that is me for 2023. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. And if you're not celebrating, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I will see you all in 2024.